So our first example was to do with airlines and scheduling and the network and using a graph. Now let's look at a different problem. So suppose we have a photocopying shop, Campus Xerox, inside a university campus. The deadline for projects is approaching and a bunch of students want their projects copied urgently. So they all go and submit their reports to the photocopying shop and say we want so many copies made within such a time. So now the question for the shop is how best to schedule these jobs. Now there are many different ways in which this problem can be phased, phrased, so let's look at one of them. Right? So suppose these students have submitted their jobs and this shop, Campus Xerox, is competing against some rivals. So it's offering a special deal. Okay? So it says that it will give each customer a promised delivery time. And if it doesn't meet the schedule, like a pizza shop, it will give a discount. Right? So I'll promise you a report within six hours. And if you don't get it within six hours, then you pay less. Now, in this time frame, there are of course some bigger jobs and some smaller jobs. So some, some photocopying jobs will be faster to finish, some will take longer. But at the same time, they all have to run on the same machines that the Xerox shop has. So now you can reorder things. So you could take something which came later and put it earlier on the machine and hope to finish it within its deadline and therefore not have to give a discount and take something which is going to take longer and postpone it saying anyway you are not going to meet the deadline and give up the discount on that job. Right? So the job, the, the problem that the Xerox shop has is how to do this schedule. Right? So there is always in the background what is called a brute force approach. You can say, okay, now I have to allocate these photocopying jobs to the machines in some order. So let me try every possible order and choose the one which gives me the best return. Now the problem with this is that it will take a very large amount of time to do this because the number of possibilities is exponential. Even if we have just 30 requests pending, it will take several hours to find a comp an optimal schedule and in that those several hours you might as well have gone ahead and done some work so that you got the jobs done and perhaps not optimally at least got some money for it. So here is where we come to the idea of decomposition. Right? So can we solve this problem? by reducing it to a simpler problem. Okay. So supposing we fix one job to run first. If we fix this job to run first, we are left with the remaining jobs. Now the remaining jobs are smaller in number. So if there was a way to optimally solve for n minus one jobs, then we can pick each of the first jobs, each of the jobs to be the first job, and for each of them determine how much time it takes efficiently, if we can, to do the remaining n minus one and choose the best one. So this would give us a kind of recursive solution. Pick one and solve the rest and then add the time for this one. Another option is to just come up with a strategy. Okay. Looking at all the jobs which are yet to be done, we find some criterion by which we choose one to do next. Now we could have different criteria for this. For instance, we could choose the one to do next which has the least number of pages that will take the shortest time to process. Or we could take the one to do next which is closest to its deadline, that is the one for which we are most likely to miss finishing it in time and having to give a discount. So for each of these we could have a strategy which would tell us which job to do next without looking at all the possibilities of doing the other jobs. But then we have to justify that the strategy that we have chosen is actually optimal. Is it better to choose shortest process, process in time? Is it shorter to choose the earliest deadline? Or is there yet another criterion? And how do these criteria justify the choice? Will I always get the best possible re return on my uh, machines by choosing this strategy? Now, as we saw with the airline network problem, the basic problem has many different variations which are possible. For instance, if we assume that the shop has many photocopiers, it is reasonable to assume that some are new and some are old. So the ones that are new may work faster than the ones that are old. Therefore, the time that it takes to finish a job depends on which machine we put the job on. So if we have this additional complication, does the strategy that we chose for the type where all machines are uniform still hold? Or do we have to look at a different strategy? The other factor is, of course, that the cost of doing something varies across machines. 
Okay. So if we use a machine, we use some resources. We use some ink, we use paper, we use electricity. And this cost may vary from one machine to another. So now the question becomes related to the first question, the previous question, which is that now if I, if I split my job across machines, it might not only take more or less time, it also may cost the shop more or less. So the actual revenue that the shop realizes may be more or less, depending on which machine it chooses. The other thing that you might want to keep in mind is that a machine cannot run indefinitely without having to be stopped for some time for maybe some maintenance, for loading paper, for something. So you can't realistically assume that every machine is continuously available. Now under all these situations, is there still a valid 3D strategy or do we have to do something else? Right? So you see the general idea. The general idea is that there is a basic problem with some constraints which you want to solve, but that problem can be amplified or made more realistic by adding several new features and each time you add a new feature you have to see whether the solution that you have for the simpler problem still works or whether the new feature demands a radically new approach and if so how you should get that.